Too much, then. Too much what? Whatever you had last night. You got to line your stomach. Not like a bit of fish oil. You could make a bit less noise. I'll puree them and suck them through a straw if you're that sensitive. Go on, you stop chewing, so you must be thinking. Only one of my many prejudices. Georgina Webster, much respected member of the Howls and Hunt, died tragically on Saturday when her horse shied the hedge. Well, which particular prejudice are we talking about now, Andy? Hunting. Can't deal with it. I'd give the horse a medal. A lot of posh pillocks with the silver spoons up the job as chasing a sweet little fox. It's not all posh pillocks. Your foxes do a lot of damage. Countryside in meltdown deserves a bit of respect. I was like, what's your guts being pulled out of you, steaming and eaten by a pack of hounds? If you don't like it, you can always move out, you know. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. Hold on now, one star differeth from another star in glory. Oh, it's awful. A lot of people about but don't give it to us. Ain't that right, Vicky? I'm afraid so. I'll be at the house if you need someone to talk to or a large malt. Yeah. Thanks for that, James. Not now, birdie. Stop it with you. Sorry, Mr. Marshall. Let's go in, Henry. There's only one thing for you to do now, Henry. Take yourself away for a time. How can I, James? George was everything to me. Seems like she's still around. Just out for a ride somewhere. Hmm. That feels as if I was deserting her. Well, no need to go back to an empty house. You can stay here tonight. I have to go back sometime, don't I? May as well be tonight, but thanks, James. I appreciate it. Uh, at least I could do. I was always very fond of the two of you together, you know. You made her happy. Excuse me, Mitch. I'm so sorry. Weatherton, please. This is James Marsham, Harson Hall, Master of Hounds. I'd like to speak to Assistant Chief Constable Rebecca Fenning, please. She knows who I am. Mr. Marsham received this letter today. <coughs> Weatherton Postmark, yesterday, 4.15 p.m. Well, should that mean anything? It could do. Posted during the day. So maybe it's someone who doesn't work regular hours, or someone who's so rich they haven't had to do at all. Maybe you'd read the letter, Superintendent. Uh, it's been checked for fingerprints, has it? Yes, only Mr. Marsham's. May I? Uh... Of course. Thank you. <clears throat> Dear Master of the Hounds, Georgina Webster's death is not a tragedy, but an indictment of fox hunting. Now people will see the hunt for the barbaric anachronism that it is. Then her death will have served 
some useful purpose. A friend. Very eloquent. Well, do I take it from that you share this opinion? Not quite. It doesn't surprise me. Still, enough to start an investigation, though, ma'am, is it? I think it needs checking out. We have been having quite a lot of trouble with the local hunt saboteurs just recently. Ah, the Weatherton subs. How quaint. Terrorists, as far as I'm concerned, Superintendent. Let's see about that, shall we, Mr Marsham? I believe in first things first. Meaning? We have to find out if there's anything odd about the death before we start looking for someone to blame. So, you'll investigate, Superintendent, and Mr Marsham's promised us all the help he can give. Nothing to it. Plenty of people hate hunting, and riding's a dangerous game. People are always falling off and killing themselves. You can go near a horse if you begged me. I would. Was it properly checked out? Yes, sir. We had a transit van full of police at the scene, expecting trouble from the Weatherton Sabs. Well, there wasn't, was there? No. Odd that. I expect they saw what happened and called it off. Only because the hunt called it off. Somebody dies on the hunting field and everyone goes home. You know a lot about all this, don't you, Ivor? Childhood memories. When we were kids, we used to follow the hunt on Boxing Day. It's not just about the kill. What is it about, then? I'll tell you what it's all about, Wieldy. It's about a toffee nosed twerp throwing his weight about with a police force. And an ACC whose knees go a tremble at the sight of him. Are you jealous, sir? Now then, Wieldy. Don't you even think it. And if you want to ask questions, you take another look at the accident scene. Oh, and, uh, Get D.I. Pasco out of bed and take him with you. Didn't know you are a closet fox hunter? No. All them men in jumpers. You all right, sir? Of course. Bad pint last night, that's all. Oh. Well, this looks like a real waste of time. Over here. See down there? Could have been a firework or a small charge of some kind. Enough to scare a horse. What's that? Sir? <laughs> Andy, it's Peter. Time to get your shoes muddy. Hey! I know I grew up in excrement, but this is ridiculous! You look terrible, Peter. Thanks. What's so important I couldn't be in the Black Bull? This. Found the hedge over there, right where the horses jump. Some sort of timer. Found anything else? Not yet. No? Someone's stood here lately, haven't they? Come on, Wieldy. Someone was watching. Nervous, too. Right. Get to it. You got yourself an official investigation. A murder case. Death in suspicious circumstances. She lived in the village, right? Yeah, with a boyfriend. All right. What's he like? I don't understand. I just when you hope she might be a piece of thought for being dug up and examined. That's all quite discreet. It can be done at night if necessary. It knocks you sideways, frankly. I'm, I'm just glad her parents aren't alive to see her. Georgina, you, uh, known her long? Yeah, two years. Love at first sight. It's absolutely conventional. Lived together for 18 months. We were to be married in the spring. She was everything to me. Her house, is it? Yeah, I'm trying to carry on as normal. A, because that's what she wants, and B, because a bit of routine's the only thing that stops me from going mad. What do you reckon to these sabs? 
I don't know, what should I think? Well, they have a point of view. I'm not sure what you're saying to me. Someone wanted Georgina dead. That's what we're trying to establish. Which uh, one of these is you, then? Uh, first and second 11, our second slip. Uh, Poe Face used to call me. See what a serious chap I was. Charter. Good school. Then what? Oxford? Cambridge. Red history. Lower second, I'm afraid. I wasn't cut out to be an academic. No, was I. Much prefer business in any case. You can ask everyone questions. Ah, oh, Did anyone have a grudge against Georgina? Everyone liked George. Always popular. And since meeting Henry, she was even happier. Did you see the fall? No, she was at the back of the field. It's just bad luck. She was a fine rider. Why are you asking these questions? Routine inquiries. Couldn't give us a cup of tea, could you? Sorry, Ed. Not a problem. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. It's just I keep expecting to see her again. Spooky. Of course I'm all right. <laughs> This place, the equestrian centre, you run it? Yeah. With Georgina. After Henry, it was her big love. Whose is this, then? Mr Marshall's? No, his are the stables down the road. So who owns this, then? It's a trust. People who love horses. They leave us money in their wills. Worth dying for. Do we really need this? I like quick answers. They're called axiomation engineers. Um, I had to tell you not to come. Had to, James. I gave permission. What are they looking for? Anything odd. They promised to rebury her within 24 hours. Oi! Oi! Stop! Stop! What the hell are you doing? Dig an old. Robert, we've got the coroner's permission. They're just doing their job. Henry! You should have stopped this. You're late, Peter. They're finished. That was quick. They don't hang around. Besides, they're on overtime rates, Messrs. Burke and Air. Now then. You can see the nature of the accident, uh, here and here. Facial damage where she first fell, that would knock her unconscious. Then she twisted and the neck snapped. Nothing else? Scuffed hands, bruised ribs. But I can't tell you anything from the body that would make you think that it wasn't an accident. Marvellous. Not worth the JCB. On the other hand, I have been looking over the other evidence. The stuff that really belongs with forensic. Well? Smell that. Gunpowder. Taken from the charge of a bullet, I'd say. Might be a firework. Thought so. And this? Oh, I talk to ballistics. That's a trigger device with a few seconds delay timer. Someone taps it off when a horse knocks it. Quite enough to make it rear. You do realise there was no need to dig up a churchyard to tell you that. Still, I suppose every little helps. Come on, you. Thanks. I'm not sure what we've got. Simple either. A young woman forced to her death off her horse. Scorch marks in the hedge must have been recent, or the powder would have been washed away. And the uh, charred timer. Just, well, no one saw anything. Wouldn't have been a lot to see. Just one flash. Enough to frighten the horse and make it rear. Any role. Don't give up just yet. Get down the village and ask around. It is a murder case. Suspicious death. Treat as murder till proved otherwise. Somebody made something happen that day. 
one of the hunt, one of the shabs. Wheelie, you go and talk to the hunting lot. Anyone who was riding. Hunt followers too. How was the fiance? Straight as a die. Stiff as a poker. Oh, how about that woman at the equestrian centre? Amanda saw nothing. But Georgina seems to have had a share in the centre. It's run by a trust. I got these anti-hunting leaflets. Oh, lovely. Pinch of meal, go and talk to them. I thought you hated hippies and students. I do, they're all condoms and cannabis. Sounds all right to me. Will be. Anyway, I shall enjoy spoiling that day. Used to shave with one of those. Hello, policeman. It's funny how they can tell. When you've been on a demo or two, you learn a lot about the police. Are you the saboteur in chief? Or is there an officer in charge? I think you want Midge Cartwright. He's in the office at the back. Uh, would you like some tea? I think we've some bourbons left too. <laughs> Never mind. D.I. Pasco, Superintendent D.L., Wellington CID. We need a word. Been my guest. <laughs> Go on. You're far too skinny to play. Who do you follow? Who do you think? Castleford. Sam Holmes passed it. How are we then? Busy? Hunting season is always busy. Out of season too. Fundraising, publicity, lobbying. We're getting there. All right, what? Halston Hunt. A dead rider. The master of the hunt had a letter. He thinks you sent it. I didn't know he could read. What did it say? That Georgina Webster's death was a good thing. Hunting's about enjoying death, isn't it? And naturally, as far as you're concerned, those folk are just a big, bad part of the British elite that have kept those lads down for centuries. I just think they're a bunch of people who like dressing up in silly clothes and charging about the countryside, blowing a horn and shouting a lot. I've got nothing against that. Just that they kill a fox at the end of it. That was you there that day, wasn't it? In the woods, watching. How long does it take you to chew a piece of gum? There were four pieces. You must have been there some time. I watched the hunt. That's right. Saw the horse, but that was after she'd fallen off. I didn't know she was dead. Can't help you. Something going on in that hunt, isn't there? What? What do you think's going on? I don't know, but... Susie, this is Superintendent D.L. D.I. Pascal. Hello. Come to warn us off about the hunt. Gain a few brownie points with the local knobs. The girl who died. Someone wrote a letter to Marsham about her. That was an accident. Was it? That's what we're trying to find out. Only you listen to Marsham, jump to the usual conclusions. But we must have arranged it somehow. Blame us. Susie? OK. Susie who? Susie Hobbs. I suppose you were in the woods that day too? No, I wasn't. Right. We'll be off. But, uh, if either of you have any ideas, give us a call. DL, Weatherton CID. Uh, none of them seem quite the type, so that's the trouble with life. As I've always said, nobody's ever quite the type. And you said it. Like you're not the type to clean the scum line off the bath. Either iron them old shirts or chuck them and whack the butter off the marmalade top. Living with you is like living in a small fascist state. You're a fun follower. Why? So what does a hunt follower do exactly, Mr. Burdus? Well, what do you think? Follows the hunt. Oh. Sorry. Ask a silly question. So, how far off from the action we stand in? About a hundred yard. Magnificent. Like a cavalry charge when they sorted themselves out. You're a real fan, aren't you? Well, it's English. He liked it. The Iron Duke. I sit here and have a drop of scotch with him most evenings. Brandy on the night before the meet. Oh, we have some real old chats. Salamanca, Waterloo, horse flesh. Work on the estate? 
Not now, but this is an estate cottage. Grace and favour, they call it. So what goes on in the hunt? Well, naturally, there are some things you can never find out. It's a tight world, you see. Closed society, you might say. The meet on Saturday. Anything unusual happen? Oh, I, I can't tell you much at all. <laughs> the VCR's gone up the toilet, so I can't even watch the vid. You made a video of the hunt? Of course. Every meet for the last two years. Sometimes you're a clever lad, Wildy. Play that bit back. Stop. Back a bit. There. That's it, all right. Quite enough to frighten a horse. Kids throwing a firecracker. Oh, bigger than that. Forensics say the powder came from a bullet. This was a trigger device. And where do we get those things from? If you don't know, find out. Someone planted it in the hedge just before the hunt. One of the saps from the woods? Might be. What about the other end? The place is managed by a trust, isn't it? Thing is... Can we trust the trust? Then there's the hunt. Bit of a close shot, Birder says. Everyone in that place is cagey. Do you think the townies are against them? You know what we need, Ivor? Someone to go on the inside. Someone who likes men in jodhpurs. Oh, no. <laughs> no, thanks. Do you want me to finish up tips Mr. Marshall? Yes, go on. Nice. Hello. Fine morning. Not much wind. Sense should be strong. Shelley Bears, you tell the I am James Marshall, master of the hunt. Ah, uh, you were very good to hide my horse. This is Robert Derringer, our huntsman. How do you do? Anything you need. Hey, why don't you ride with me? Have a drink in the pub first. Why don't you go in, Robert? Best to introduce Miss Bayless to her horse. I'll uh, see you later. You know, Robert's rather like a horse I used to own. He's all right as long as you keep him in check. Why oh, no, let me guess. You run your own business, you like uh, chilled shabby, and your favourite holiday is Tuscany in May. Two out of three is very good. Fair skin. Italian heat does not treat it kindly. This is Gypsy. Eight years old, south in Ireland. Had him for three years. Intelligent. Likes to go out in front, don't you? Eh? Bit of an individualist. He's lovely. Undercover? This isn't your private army. Have you seen the fellow? She's good. In fact, she spent half a childhood on a horse. How do I know you're lying to me, Andy? Look, we've given her a full story. Set up a liaison point. But visitors often go and ride with another hunt. They come for a few days, stay at the local pub, borrow a horse, and since hunting's drinking as much as it is riding, it shouldn't be long before someone becomes indiscreet. All right. But don't upset the locals. Harsden's a nice village. Pity it's not a bunch of miners, then we could have done what we liked. Watch it, Superintendent. I'm not asking you to kowtow to the gentry. I'm telling you to go by the book. You see, I know how you work. <laughs> ah, superintendent! Come for the warm wine and a cold sausage, have you? No, I haven't. Oh, come on, that's traditional hunting fair, that. I like my wine cold and my meat warm. Nothing to worry about. It's only deer, you're right. <laughs> Smother the stink of human beings. Hunts have to use it to put the hounds off the scent. Come on, you lot.
I smell trouble. Sure, it's not there, Pedal. Hey. Hey! Come on! Come on! On me, on me! Idea, Andy. <laughs> Superintendent, you're interfering with a legitimate hunt. I'm warning you. Really, this plane out before someone important gets there. All right, let's just try to calm it, everyone, shall we? Dark for a day or two. Got it. What? The name of a good dry cleaners? Susie. She's been up in court a few times. Oh, let me guess. Drugs. Process. So why did it take you so long? Because she's changed the name. Okay, what? Martian. The master of the hounds is Susie's dad. Well, there's a turn up. Why didn't you tell us? Why didn't she? Hunt and saboteur, father and daughter. He told us the sabs were behind it. Maybe he wanted to get his daughter into trouble. Teach her a lesson for not being daddy's good girl. Not on a murder charge, surely. Don't you believe it? It's not like families for making people want to kill. People get so venomous. They leave their meat, they accept factory farming, but if you hunt a fox, strange, isn't it? Amanda? Wouldn't come in here now, Superintendent. <laughs> It's wonderful what some men have in their trousers, isn't it? Second one wasn't so lucky, eh? Finish with your saboteur activity for the time being, have you? Sorry, just happened to be sitting in the way. You wouldn't even try to understand us. Me and a lot of other people. Like your daughter. Jesse, Have you ever seen a lamb after it's been killed by a fox and his stomach's ripped out, eh? Well, I don't suppose you mind abattoirs as long as you get your fast food, but let me tell you. Thousands of jobs will go if the hunt goes, and damn it, fox hunting is England. Not my bit of it, it's not. That's enough, sir. Let's go. What is your bit of England, eh? What's that Hovis and Bisto adverts, I shouldn't wonder? Oh, you are a smug man, Dial. I'm sure you call a spade a spade, after all you hold yourself up through the ranks, and now you have a fine beer gut and a mobile phone, and the rest of the plods call you, sir. Not James. Mr. Marsham, it's Dial. I'll see you at the station tomorrow, with your hangover. And you can bring Basil Brush with you as well, if you like. I'll show you where you can stuff it. Excitement of the aunt, too many whiskies. He always goes too far. He meant it. So did I. Maybe you should remind your Mr. Martian. He concealed an important piece of information from us when we started this inquiry. What's that? He was leading us to his own daughter. OK, so he was ashamed of her or what she's doing. He blames herself for everything. But he really believes something happened to Georgina. Just 
just wasn't a very good idea, Mr. Marsham. Puts the hunt in a bad light. Well, things have changed in this country. The hunt's already in a very bad light. Perhaps you didn't notice. Perhaps you're too busy mooning over Georgina. Don't cheat that man. She was never yours in the first place. The nearest you got to riding her was to help us saddle up. You're going too far! Go to hell! I'm doing the kennels. Oh, Dan. You forgot my yard clothes. You haven't got anything I can borrow, have you? Do I have Mr. Marsham's? He keeps him in his locker. Can I go now? Yeah, you're all right, Jenny. I'll lock up. Gloves up. Reading again. What's that? Never read it. See three so soon. Memoirs of a fox hunting man. I suppose what you'd call a pastoral. What's that then? Well, the old rural England. Big society. And the Great War blew it all apart. Still. Some things never change. How's that? Rabbit stew. Just like your mum made. Rabbit? What's wrong with rabbit? Oh, it's just... Rosie had a rabbit. Oh. Besides, I thought you were your new champion of animal rights. Don't be daft. I still eat, don't I? Now, come on. Try this rump. Tender as warm putty, is that? thing to do. Must have got carried away, ma'am. Oh, you've made us a laughing stock and ruined an expensive investigation. I should never have listened to Marsham, and I should certainly never have listened to you. Even if I tell you now, I think Marsham is right. Andy, I don't care. <laughs> Murder. You've proved nothing. And now you never will. Just trust me. Another day. Two. Trust you? Why? Because I've still got Novello undercover. And I know there's something going on. No. No, that's it, Superintendent. Close it down. I mean it, Andy. Right there. Sorry, ma'am. I'm afraid she's right, of course. 
Well, I'll have to have a cup for you, Peter Pascoe. In any case, you were going to call it off yourself. There was all suspicion and no real evidence. Who we got, though? Martian? Derringer? Susie? It's time we found her again. Oh, and that's a uh, funny boat Wieldy talked to. Burtis. They want to follow him. Yeah. It's there all the time, but we're missing it. It's something to do with the Sabs and the Hunt. Have you got any more of that trigger device from forensics? You're no longer on the case, Andy. Oh, I can still ask questions, can't I? Forensics say they're easy to get hold of, so you don't get much help there. DL. Yeah? Okay. We'll be there in half an hour. Something's happened at Arlton Kennels. Hi. Can I join you? Yeah. <laughs> Sit down. So, how's Gypsy? Oh, you should come and see her. She's at the centre. Oh, better get back there. Will you pop out later, Henry? Yeah, sure. You have an interest in the centre, too. Just like going there. Sorry to interrupt, Mr Crayford, but there's a call from the kennels for you. There's been some sort of accident. What sort of accident? I didn't say. A policeman. Probably some of the hounds out. I expect James will have sorted it. Oh, excuse me, I'll get up there. May I come with you? Yeah, can you give us a lift? Yeah. Right. God knows what could have happened. This old damn thing's been a nightmare. It's almost as if Georgina's death started something hasn't finished yet. What does that mean? Not sure exactly. By the way. Yeah. Really? Over here, sir. The kennel yard. Not a pretty sight. We've called in the vet to examine the dogs. Who's the girl? Name's Jenny. Stable girl. Funny thing, the clothing and boots, they belong to Martian. How do you mean? Well, he's the one who usually sees to the dogs every night. Except last night he was Darringer. Sorry, but we need to ask you some questions. Last night, Mr. Derringer came to the yard instead of Mr. Marsham. Yeah, he came without his work clothes and had to borrow Mr. Marsham's. Anything odd about him? He's a bit drunk. But it was hunt day and grumpy, but then he usually is with me. Well, I shouldn't say that now, should I? What time was this? Hunt day. He was still here when you left? <clears throat> he told me that he would lock up. And then when I came back this morning... Sorry, love. Um, when you got back, the hounds were still in there and the gate was bolted. Yeah. Think about last night. Anyone else around? Not in the yard. That funny bloke was watching from across the field through binoculars. Funny bloke? Who? He lives in the village. Daft name. He hangs around the stables. Birdus? Yeah. You get people like him round a hunt. Don't people make fun of him? Call him a loser. I want him, Wildy. Yes, sir. Yep. Need some air. 
Robert's death. It's dreadful. Horrible. I know. That's why I locked in. The hounds loved him. Nothing can be the same. Bad news. No, no. Look, Cam, let me make you a cup of coffee or something. No. <laughs> Something's wrong. Is it money? No, it's all right. Henry says it's all right. He helps sometimes with all this. Henry Crayford? Dear Piddle, I reckon, don't you? Hey, oh here he is. Hey. That was wonderful, Superintendent. The forces of law are challenging the powers of evil. You've done wonders for our publicity. Yeah. Or well, maybe you could help me. You're a rugby man, so you know all about the behaviour in packs. You told us there was something odd about Harleston Hunt. Did I? Now, come on, lad. You hang around hunts all the time. So you must get to know something. What the pecking order is, who's in charge, which farmers back it, who's against. It's true. But all I can tell you is there's something odd. Odd? Some tension there. Where's Susie Hobbs, Mr Cartwright? She's baiting the badger baiters in Chormsby. Why? I just wondered if there's any reason why she didn't tell us that James Marsham was her father. You'd have to ask her that. But when does she get back? Could be a while. She's working undercover. We do a lot of that. Like you. Well, when she turns up, can you tell us to get in touch with D.I. Pasco? I will. Tonight, Superintendent. Thanks again. Very touching, Andy. Ah, wasn't it? Now, I want a discreet watch put on this place, and Susie pulled in as soon as she turns up. Sorry? She's all we've got. She's lied to us. And she hates her dad. If she's treated right, she'll talk, trust me. I trusted you yesterday. Where now? Try around the back, Bob. Okay, Mr. Burdus? Back door open, was it? Yes, Sarge. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. No. Well, maybe we can talk about this somewhere more comfortable, yeah? Marsham's clothes. Aye. These are his boots. Some people would say it was too big for him anyway. There you are, Andy. This is what it means to be savaged by a pack of hounds. You're lucky it didn't happen to you the other day. What have you got? Blood and saliva everywhere. Oh, something else. Traces of fox scent on the boots and jacket. That would explain why the hounds would make mincemeat as someone they knew and trusted. No, he was already dead. Someone had hit him on the back of the head. Single blow with something blunt. 
So, the murderer was after Marsham? Maybe. First murder was pure chance, second one was clever. But ends up killing the wrong victim. Looks like we're after a smart bungler piece, sir. Or someone who likes playing the odds. Motive? Someone who wants to destroy the hunt. That's sap, you mean? Yeah. Or something more personal. Money. Revenge. Let's go. OK, thanks. They've spotted Susie back at the sub HQ. I'll get over there. All right. Now, come on, Mr. Burdus. I know nothing about it. Really, sir. No one's accusing you. But you were near the stables. And you could be the last person to have seen him alive. Well, I go there a lot. I just like being near. What do you like being near? Them. Which them? The hunt, Mr. Weald. The horses, the people, the hounds, the master. Not like the rest of us, are they? They're history. We're just the non-entities. All right. You like to look. Why cycle away when the stable girl saw you? Well, I thought she might complain. Might get me in trouble with the powers that be. And hiding in the cupboard in your bedroom. Didn't you think that might get you in trouble? Well, I, I was scared, see? That's the difference. Them, they don't get scared. They say this country's classless, right? But it's not. There's still people of quality. People in their right places. All this respect you feel for them. Do you really think they feel it for you? But that's not the point, sir, is it? Do you know what they say about hunt followers? They say you always get nerds and oddballs with the hunt. Losers. People who can't get a life. I don't think so, sir. Right, Mr. Burdus, I ought to tell you we found these in your garden shed. Now, they've been opened. It's the same powder we found in the hedge where Miss Webster died. When someone attempted to scare her horse. Can I go to the toilet? Ms. Marsham? Yeah? We need to talk to you. Well, I'm not called Miss Marsham and I really don't have anything to say. Right then. It's your choice. It's either the cafe around the corner or Wellers and Nick. Take the cafe. All right. to you know he just never asked anyway he never really was my father never when it mattered what did you want you do know I'm investigating two murders Georgina Webster and now Robert Derringer the huntsman I suppose you heard he was killed last night only just I wasn't here where then I was trying to stop some big stupid men with sticks and dogs from killing badgers well, where was that Ten Penny Woods, past Thursk. Anyone with you? Mike, a friend. A boyfriend? Oh, I see. You want to know whether other men find me attractive? Other men? Well, detectives don't usually question their suspects in cafes, do they? Who says you're a suspect? Aren't I? Yes, you are. So I need some answers. Just when did you get back? 
Early this morning, round six. I had a long bath. On my own. So there's no alibi. Sorry, copper. It's time we back down a bit. No! If we suspend all our activities now, they've won. Susie, there's some very weird stuff going on around that hunt. You heard about what happened to Derringer. I don't want any of our people hurt. Protests never got anywhere by backing down, Midge. Protest, Susie, not reckless risk-taking. It's weak. What you're saying is weak. There are other hunts. There's the badger baiting. We're not short of activities. I'm just saying lay off the hunt. Yeah, but we were getting somewhere with Harlston. It was kneeling him, getting attention. For all I know, one of our people was involved in this death. It's possible. For all I know, you were involved, weren't you? I have to know! Did you have anything to do with his death? My question exactly. Sorry, Ms. Marsham. I know you talked to my colleague earlier, but I would like a word at the station. <laughs> I get it. Soft cop and hard cop. You're very sharp. I hope so. This man that was savage to death last night, I think a lot of that was meant for your father. I'm sorry. I don't give a toss about those people dying. Not even if it had been my father. Right. Fair enough. I didn't kill him. I didn't do it. We didn't do it. None of it had anything to do with us. You don't believe me. Then why would I? I may hate my father, but not enough to kill anyone just to ruin his vile hunt. What happened? What? You and your dad. Little Susie Marsham. Lucky girl. Privileged background. Daddy's a bit remote. Mummy's off playing bridge. A succession of selfish nannies. And they all have to do exactly what you want. Because you're the lord of the manor, the little rich kid. You can get him sacked and get what you want. Temper tantrums, spoiled little brat, that was me. Smash it all. Makes you feel real. And when you smashed it all? Smash it some more. Thanks, love. What was all that? Come on, Peter. It's time for a think. 
Feisty lady, Susie. I like that. She's got a bit of the Ellie in her. You should see her after. Why'd you let her go like that? Surely it's got to be the Savs. Couldn't keep her. Not without more to go on. Besides, I don't reckon her for it. But I did get her to write the name down of a friend she spent the night with. Get that to the one who does the handwriting. Graphologist, Andy. Yeah, and get him to compare it with the signature on the letter to Martian. They look different to me, but I do like things checked. I told you this investigation was closed down. Yeah. Only the moment you took me off, there was another murder. Mm, I heard. Found the killer. Seemed to have plenty of suspects. That? Oh, that's just uh, Peter's party trick. See, Burdus there, he's just a sad nutter. Doubtly a killer. Susie's doubtful. I'll get Peter to talk to her again. In fact, um, Peter was just leaving, weren't he, Peter? You better get yourself something to eat. I hope you're doing justice to James Martian. Never fair, ma'am. Hmm. So, it's one or the other. The Hunt followers or the Sabs? Yeah. I was thinking, ma'am, I, um, I usually work these things out better in the Black Bull. Do you? Well, why not? Mine's a vodka and tonic. It's terrible. I'm truly sorry, James. I know these hounds, every one of them. I saw them born, I looked after them. If you go to court, they won't necessarily have them put down. Uh, I think they will, Henry. I think they will. Besides, who'd want them after this? Would you? Things fall apart. The centre cannot hold. We'll get another pack. No, I don't think so. I think this is the end of something. The end of an era, a way of life. And I pity it. And I fear what comes after. Have they told us yet what happened to Robert? No, but I'm sure the police will get to the bottom of it. Are you? Are you sure? Then. Go easy, Amanda. Go easy yourself, Henry. Come on. We've all had a ghastly day. It's all the fault of the Sabs. Is it? If Jordina and Robert's death are connected, it may not be them at all. Meaning what? Meaning someone in the hunt. Someone connected to it. Oh, that's ridiculous, James. We all know each other like a family. Well, families are strange things, aren't they? Could it be something to do with money? Why are you always asking about money? All those questions you're asking at the centre. Questions? Yeah, she's always asking them. Where'd you come from, Shirley? Please. I'm not suggesting it's anyone here. Let's not turn on each other like this. James, you do realise you're a possible victim? Really? Look, if you'll excuse me, there are things I should be getting on with. Would you care to join me for an early ride tomorrow? Why not? Good. Susie, we must talk. No, thanks. 
need to know something. Oh, do you? Need to know something. Can I come in? No. Please. Yes. I never wanted to see you again after Mother died. Susie, you don't understand. No, I don't. What? Tell me what. I need to know if you're connected in any way to the deaths of Georgina and Robert. Why would I? All right. Georgina replaced you. See, it was always me that looked after those hounds. So what do you think? I don't think you are. This is about the hunt, isn't it? It's always about the hunt. That's you, isn't it? The master of hounds. Why do you hate me so much? Because I was there. I've never got it out of my head. Oh, for God's sake, it was so long ago. Seems like yesterday to me. Always will. Good Lord, a book. Has not much of a story to it? It's just a life, an autobiography. I thought he was German, this Siegfried. Only he's English. Hmm. Landed gentry. <laughs> Only ones who had time to write their memoirs. The servants had to be polite and loyal while they were out in their ears. The servants and masters. That was the way. Except the servants knew everything. I suppose. Like that Burgess. You know, we ought to get him talking again now he's a bit calmer. Get Wieldy to do it. Oh, and uh, it's an important day tomorrow. Dustbin day. Don't forget, will you? You just saw the smoke and went in? That's right, sir. And what were you doing there? Out on the bike and I heard a bang. When I got there, first thing I thought was, let it burn. But you didn't. Mr. Marsham was in there. Nothing been right for him lately. I thought, poor beggar, he's lost everything too. The hunt's all finished. What's the blooming point? Thank you, Mr. Burgess. So he's alive. Thank God for that. He'll live. Oh, God. It's all finished, isn't it? The hunt and everything. 
Where were you this morning, Mr. Crayford? At the Equestrian Centre. Anyone else about? Yeah, Amanda. Who would know James was going to the stables? All the people who were at James's place yesterday. Maybe you could write their names down. OK. School of yours, uh, Charlton. Do you remember the motto? None to be solemn, not for ourselves alone. Memoirs of a fox hunting man. Not a bad book, this. That's a long time since I read it. Interesting bit. The death of the servant, Dixon. He does all the hard work, gets killed in the trenches. It only ends up with a couple of sentences. Not fair, somehow. No, I suppose not. That was them, wasn't it? <sighs> Servants and masters. It's a very good bit. Sorry, I don't remember. Here you go. We'll be in touch. What was all that about? Nothing much. How's Novella getting on? Nobody blown a cover? She's worried. Keep her at it. I think she's getting closer than she knows. Oh, and, uh, this is another bit of work for the chiropodist. You don't think it? Go on, take it to Weatherton. And after you've done that, drop by and see how Marsham's getting on. Well, what are you going to do? Me? I'm going for a bit of a drive in the country. what they all want, of course. The end of the hunt. The hounds all slaughtered and just enough scandal to finish us. Can start again, can't it? <laughs> These days. Oh, but... Excuse me, would you? I've got a call to make. talking about. He said he'd take me with him. And he won't know. I know that now. He said after Georgie died that everything would be different. But it wasn't. No. The equestrian centre. Is that what it's all about? You always ask questions. Something dangerous is going on. Henry was messing with the accounting. For us, he said, so we could go away. But now I realise he was just fooling both of us. Georgie and me. Look, I shouldn't talk to you. He doesn't like it. When he found out you'd been asking about money... He asked you about me. Have you arranged to meet him? What's it to do with you? You said you were anxious. All right, yeah. At the equestrian centre tonight. He said it was something very important. What time? A couple of hours. How is he? Serious. I didn't expect to see you here. Didn't expect to come.
Henry Crayford. Do you remember him? Hmm. Oh, yes, I remember Crayford. <laughs> the quiet boy. Not outstanding academically. Ah, uh, yeah, there he is. Chorister. <laughs> Very useful slow spin bowler. Left arm over, wasn't it? Yes, that's it. A lefty. What about his family? Oh, his mother was Welsh. Industrial money, I seem to remember. Father, cousin of the Earl of Lancaster. Lots of acres of acres up in the north somewhere. Strong rider in the hunt. And next to horses, they love boats. Yeah, it's tragic, really. What was? Well, that's how they died, of course. Family holiday. Sailing to Cyprus or somewhere. Sudden Mediterranean storm. Ran onto the rocks. Tragic. Chaplain played for those in peril at the memorial service. They're all dead. Henry's dead. Well, of course, didn't you know? I do now. Thank you, Mr. Pembroke. Oh, Superintendent, you've forgotten your photograph. Oh, damn. Sorry, so clumsy of me. Fathers and sons. Mr. John Hewitt, funeral service at Wetherton Parish Church. If this is about an alibi, I told you where I was this morning with Midge. Your father nearly died, Susan. Yeah. My father. I'll tell you a story. About a little girl who saw something she didn't forget, all right? The hunt. A hunt followed come out of the woods. I remember his little boy was there. He smiled to him and waved. And the horses came charging. They knocked his dad flying. He cracked his head. He died later in hospital. And they didn't even stop the hunt. And guess who the Master of Hounds was? Daddy. It was only me who stopped. Oh, and the little boy. Did you know the man? John Hewitt. His son was called Martin. I think his widow moved away from the village after that. Took Martin with her. Peter, it's me. Listen carefully. Henry Crayford. All right? Right. He's not who he says he is. His real name's Hewitt. Tell the fellow. She's going where? You get over there quick. I'm on my way. What are you doing here? Do you think I would harm Amanda? You might. That jumped up little cow, why would I bother? Because you might tell the police about your attempt to defraud the equestrian centre. This was never about money. Or Amanda for that matter. But you know that, don't you? Whoever you are. You see, I soon realised you weren't who you said you were. When you reinvent yourself, it's not easy. It takes time and infinite patience. Is that what you've done, Henry? Reinvented yourself? Sir. Sorry to muscle in on your territory, either. But Henry here is not who he appears to be. 
Got it all off Pat. Your name's Martin, isn't it? Of course, you're police, aren't you? Very clever. You killed Georgina. Killed Danager. You're trying to kill Martian. But it didn't matter in the end, did it? It was the hunt you were killing off. All tied with the same brush. Except Georgina. I didn't know it would be Georgina. I just put the gunpowder in the edge, waiting for it to go off. That's a gamble. Life's a gamble, isn't it? He lied to me. He shouldn't have lied to me. I wonder whether Susie will make her peace with her father now. Well, he's suffered as much as she has now. Balance of suffering. That's what this is all about. Look at that. Poor beggar didn't even get a decent headstone. Servants and masters. Fathers and sons. Aye. So which are you? The servant or the master? Good question, Peter. What do you think? I think you think you're the servant who's become the master. And I'm your servant, Andy. You give the orders, I do the job. Right. Then you can start by doing the washing up. That's it, Reynard. You come into town, laddie. You'll be a lot safer here. <laughs> D. Ellen Pascoe back with another feature length episode next Saturday, five past eight. And new drama tomorrow on BBC One. More in just a moment. And then, what did the stars do before they were famous? Stand by for a laugh with Angus Deaton. <laughs>